With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving an I-75 just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. I want to be a disciple. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. How about you? Amen. That's what he's calling us to do. Now, this next scripture is very significant because it says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, this is what is what actually takes place when you preach the gospel. People hear a word and it gives them faith. And with that faith, they're able to believe and respond to God. And this scripture says, not everybody who hears the gospel responds and obeys the gospel. That's why we should say it's important to believe, but also to obey. Whatever faith has inspired in you, it should set a course of action so that you can follow it. So it's not just enough to hear. How many know we can't be just hearers of the word, but we have to be doers of the word as well? What are you going to do with what you're hearing is the important concept that Jesus Christ wants every one of us to understand. And so as he speaks to us, faith comes to us. And as that faith comes, we're to respond to the word as the Lord has given us. And as we're obedient to that word of faith, what happens to us? We have opportunities to grow in our experience with him. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, this is what Isaiah said, Lord, what, what's going on here? Well, people are not obeying. That's why we're not seeing the reality of what God has for us is because when God speaks, we look at it and we say, well, I don't know about that one. And, and we don't understand. God wants us to be followers. We follow as he casts that word to us and it inspires faith in us. And then we grab a hold of it and we keep walking in the realm that God has for us. Look what this next verse of scripture says. And Jesus said, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is getting ready to leave his disciples. He tells them literally that he's going to die on the cross, be rejected of men, and after his death, burial, and resurrection, he's going to raise from the dead, and he, he tells them the whole story. Now he's getting ready to leave them, and they're like, okay, show us the way. Tell us what we're supposed to do. Give us the outline, if you would. Jesus' response was, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Keep your eyes on me. Well, how do you keep your eyes on somebody who's died and has gone up to heaven? Well, how many know we need to understand that? Because there is a spiritual reality that we can be a partaker of. And church, God wants us to understand something. We got to keep our eyes on him. He wants to lead us. He wants to take us somewhere. And so we have to keep our focus on him so that we can become a follower of Jesus Christ, understanding he is the way. It's not a formula. It's a person. It's God himself. He is the truth. He is the life. And so we find that Jesus Christ is saying to us, I have some more life for you. I have some more truth for you. I have more for you than you've ever known before. And I believe with all my heart we're living in a day in God when God wants to take us all to a new dimension in him and experience with him we've never had before. You hungry for something? You thirsty for something? You ready for something, church? It's time. It's time. It's time. That's what God's been saying to us. And we have to prepare ourselves and be ready for what it is that God has and how we do that. We say, Lord, I want to follow Jesus Christ. Give me the word of faith that I might call, be, respond to that call and move into that greater dimension in you. 
That's why I love this scripture here in the Gospel of John. John, it says, and he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now, it's very important to understand, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, how do you know he has to be in front? Sometimes we have a tendency to kind of run and say, okay, Jesus, come on, keep up with us. This is where we want to go. Jesus, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've called you to follow me. I, I'm the good shepherd, and, and I went through the door the right way. You need to know something. Jesus Christ gave his life for you. How many know that today? He died on the cross for you. He suffered on the cross for you. He's willing to pay the price. He's somebody we can totally trust, totally have our confidence in. And it's like Ashley was saying, we have to understand it is about a love relationship that God wants to have with us, not a judicial one, if you would, but a loving one whereby we understand he is life. Once you taste life, you say, Lord, I want more. I want more. Now, I put over here in the screen right now, you do know the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Now, a lot of people, when they think about the voice of God, they think, well, I'm going to be standing there, and all of a sudden, God's going to say, hey, Lauren, this is what I want you to do. Now, it's possible God can speak to us any way he wants. Sometimes a word can be very direct. It's a time in your life where you need direction. He can give you a word. But it's important for us to look at how God speaks to us as individuals to understand how that we respond to him and respond to his voice. If you're a Christian today, that means somewhere along the line, God spoke, you responded by faith, and with that faith, there was a life-changing experience. So don't say you don't know the voice of God. You know the voice of God. It come to you. You responded to that voice, and life changed. It might have come through a sermon. It might have come through a testimony. could have come through your circumstance or your situation. But Jesus Christ came to you. How many glad he came to you? Amen? That's important to understand. He comes to us. I often share my testimony here about how when I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I only have one testimony, so when I share it over the years, I can't change it. I'm not a newsman. I can't embellish my stories at all. I have to just say, this is the way it is, and try to keep it the same. So anyway, I thought I'd throw that out and wake you up a little bit. I grew up in church, loved the Lord all of my life, and was very happy with a relationship with Jesus Christ where I went to church on Sunday morning, did my duty, and, and any time I needed him, I always knew he was there. Now, when I was 17 years of age, I had more aspirations in life because at that age, I was ready to just move on in life, and my big priority at age 17 is the priority of a lot of 17-year-old guys, and that is I need a girlfriend. I had a very good job when I was in high school. When I was 17, I had a brand new 1971 Camaro. And when I drove that car, I felt real good, but I didn't feel good when I saw the passenger seat was empty. I needed somebody over there. And so I used to work at uh, the Clarkson Wolves Den during the day. It was a co-op program, went to Clarkson High School. And uh, there was a girl I worked with there in that uh, store, and I really kind of liked her. And didn't tell her about it, but one day she happened to mention, oh, isn't that funny? She said how people are, just like you and I, we're just friends. It'd be never more than that. And I'm like, you're kidding me. <laughs> Lord, I've been praying, and what do I get? A no. Jesus, give me a girlfriend. Well, my brother Bill, he's always been more outgoing than me, and he always pursued things. He never had any problem just asking this girl that or whatever. And one day I was with him. Drove him in my new Camaro to his friend's house, and uh, he knew that his friend had a pretty teenage daughter and said, Lauren wants to take your sister for a ride in his car. And I'm like, no, I don't. How can you do that to me? Oh, I was like a nervous wreck. So I don't even think I drove. I talked when I was driving around in the car, like looking out the window like this, you know, because <laughs> that was just so unlike me. But I was believing by faith for an answer to prayer, just like that wasn't the day, I guess, but... Uh, a few days later, when I was working in the Wolves Den, as it was called, she actually came in. She's a customer. I'm like, oh, okay. And she started telling me about a place called the Prayer House. It was during what was called the Jesus People Movement, and they often had coffee houses, and, and uh, young people would gather there and really get into the Lord. And she said, do you want to go to the Prayer House? Well, at 17, growing up in church, I loved Jesus, but prayer meetings was not my idea of a Friday night out. 
that I figured I didn't want the prayer house, but I saw my answer to prayer there, so I said yes. <laughs> and so I, I, I went, and, and I remember going to the prayer house, and it, it was a wonderful experience. The girls outnumbered guys like seven to one. How I many you know there's a scripture that talks about a day when seven women will lay hold of one man? And that's where I felt. I'm walking in prophetic power right now. And I remember when they asked, who wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And I did, and I went up there, and I, I said, I want the Holy Spirit. But as they started praying for me, they said, lift your hands. I'm standing there with my hands lifted up, and all I could think about was, oh, no, what if I don't get it? All these girls that are looking for a spiritual guy, and I'm thinking all the wrong things, and before you know it, I'm speaking in other tongues. How many know the Lord is good? <laughs> Amen? So uh, if somebody needs to get the Holy Spirit, I just say, lift your hands, start thinking about anything else but God, and... <laughs> No, don't listen to me. Take the class. <laughs> but how many you know when you first come to the Lord, he, he just does things and you're looking for something else? It, that's a foundation that all of us need to understand, whether it's your initial experience with God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever new things. There is that place where the Lord uses our desires for bait, if you would, to bring us closer to him. In this next verse of scripture, it, why did they miss what was going on? It says, Jesus said to them, Oh, foolish ones, slow and of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ who has suffered these things and are entered into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them all the scriptures of things, what? Concerning himself. You see, they were caught up in what was going on. Jesus was kind of rough here. He's like, you guys, are, are you going to be foolish right now? Are you going to keep your hearts hardened and not know what's going on? And the Bible says he began to speak to them from the scriptures exactly what was going on. But they had missed what was happening because of the crisis of the moment was blinding their eyes. It was stuffing up their ears. And that's why we have to say, Lord, I don't want to be blindsided by the events of my life. I want to make sure that I'm looking for you in the middle of even my crisis. That's why we have altar calls here and why it's so important, like Jesus said, okay, they're blind. He didn't just cut them off and say, you guys are stupid, I'm out of here. He started preaching to them. How many know something happens when you hear the word? Come on. When the scriptures are spoken, whether it's preaching, teaching, or whether you're reading it yourself, we need to know there's power in the word of God. Amen? I remember myself, another testimony I have in 1988. Um, I had been diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. I was in extreme pain and discomfort most of the time. When I would come home from church back in those days, I'd get into a hot tub, massage my muscles myself, take muscle relaxers and uh, anti-inflammatory drugs or whatever to get me through the day. And our church was full and we were needing to go to two services. And I, I, I didn't want to do that because I thought, how can I do that when this first service I'm already doing is so difficult? And I would just be praying, Lord, I know you're the healer. We believe you're the God who heals. You're the God who's able to restore, and I wasn't getting better. In my crisis, I had in my mind what God had to do, and as I was praying, the word came to me, and the Lord said, from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11, for his pleasure we were and are created. And all of a sudden, I realized, wait, I'm more concerned about my pleasure than his pleasure. And I surrendered my life to God that day and said, Lord, if I have to serve you in pain, if I do it from a wheelchair, all I know is my life belongs to you. Now, what happened? Amen. What happened to me, though, is my eyes were open. When I was able to let go of myself and let go of my situation, all of a sudden I began to see Jesus in my situation. And all of a sudden I started believing, no, the Lord is going to heal me. And of course, most of you know the testimony about how he did. And it was a miraculous event that the Lord did. And I was at the old church on a Wednesday praying. And I said, Lord, I, I, I want you to just speak to me that I'm going to be healed so I can be more encouraged because we were getting ready to go on a family vacation. And when we got back from that vacation is when we were going to do the two services at the church. And I had used the gift of tongues many times where I'd pray for people, and I didn't know Spanish at the time, and I would pray in tongues, and I'd give messages in Spanish. And so I said, Lord, just if you could, let me pray in tongues and let me speak in Spanish so somebody here and just say, hey, how many know we all have our plans? 
Lord, let me say in tongues, you're going to be healed. Somebody can run up to me and say, hey, you just said in tongues, you're going to be healed. And I'm going, oh, now I believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, Sister Calco, great saint of our church history, she come up to me and she said, God just told me he's going to confirm your healing. I said, I just asked him to do it in Spanish. She said, no, it's going to be through the physicians. I said, I don't care how it comes. And so she said, let me pray for you before you go on your vacation. She prayed for me, and she actually prayed in tongues, but it was in Spanish. Brother Ramirez, who doesn't speak English, heard it. He ran out of there and told his family. But I was going to Florida, didn't know what was happening. Sister Calco didn't know what was happening. But what she said in Spanish is there would be a marked difference from that day forward. And when I was in Florida, one of my fears was picking up my kids and carrying them through Disneyland and all those things. And I told Bonnie, he says, wow, it's like a marked difference. I used the exact words and didn't know until I got home what was going on. I'd already been scheduled for Henry Ford Hospital, went there. At first, I wasn't going to do it because I felt healed, but I got the confirmation of the physicians, and the Lord worked a mighty miracle. But that wasn't the end of it. It, it did something in us that prepared us for the next level. So the very first time I did two services, I had been healed. So what I feared, I didn't even have to face. But the beautiful thing is we went to those two services. By 1990, just two years later, we had the new church here. Uh, and, and within uh, six months, we were in two services in that building. We added on the building. We added a balcony, started the Chris Clarkson Christian Association, the Wadford Christian Association, Mount Zion School. What it did is it opened a door for a whole new realm. And I really believe with all my heart, we're at a point in history of the body of Christ where God wants to open to all of us a whole new realm. I believe that when darkness is covering the earth, amen, and gross darkness, the people, God's saying it's time for us to rise and shine. And if you're facing a crisis, don't be afraid of the crisis. Don't try to control God. Don't say, Jesus, come up here. I got a plan of action. Just give yourself to him. You don't have to be afraid. The same God that started the work is able to finish your work. Just have your confidence in him. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Look at this next verse of scripture. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. God wants us to understand something. When you follow Jesus, he's not just in front of us leading the way. He's preparing a place for us. He has a plan of action. He has something in his hands. He has something that he's doing to get us ready. And, and you can see this chapter as Jesus Christ saying, I'm going to heaven and preparing a place for you. And we know in heaven there's a play, prepared place. But when you read that chapter, you understand he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about in the here and now, God goes before us and he prepares a place. That's why we have to have eyes to see it. Abraham, a man of God, was told by God, go up into this mountain and sacrifice your only son before me. And he, he didn't want to do it, of course, but he was obedient to the word of the Lord. When he got to the top of a mountain called Moriah, he was ready to sacrifice his son. And in the midst of that, the Lord said, stop, Abraham, because you are willing. I'm going to show you my plan. And the Bible says he opened his eyes. He saw Jehovah Jireh, the God who causes us to see his provision and he looked in a thicket of a bush and there was the ram for sacrifice. And I believe with all my heart God is saying to the body of Christ today, we're moving in perilous times, dark times, but I have prepared a place for you, says the Lord. I believe that God says to every single one of us here today, look for the preparation that I have for you. We are, of course, uh, all familiar with the fact that as a church we were confronted with a financial issue. Now, Mount Zion has always paid our bills. We've never been in a financial crisis. But because of the economic crisis the country went through, the bank came back and said, your buildings are only worth uh, $8 million when this is $30 million in construction here. And really, the total uh, insured value of our buildings is $50 million. And I, of course, watched the news, and I'm very interested in financial things. So I knew the bank that we had before had gotten $300 million in TARP funds from the government. And uh, they were kind of like bailed out, if you would. 
Because of that, they had to become owned by another bank. And so I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, here they come back at us, and they want us to pay the price, and they got all this money. How do you know it's easy to look at things from a natural perspective, get all upset about the situation? And I know that as a person of faith, we always have to follow God, and God has something prepared. And so I share with you, the bank said to us, you have to have a capital campaign. we got to pay this $3 million and uh, get back to under the certain amount of money, whatever, that was going on, and shared that all with you. And uh, people were encouraging me or talking about the fact that, well, you know, we need to do this to raise money and maybe put a thermometer out in the foyer and show how much we've earned and get people all on board. And I said, no, I really believe that God says Mount Zion is mature enough. Knock, knock. That if we just say, listen to the voice of God, let God speak to you, that God will supply the need. Well, the prepared place is, Somebody in the church got an invitation because of the bank that was over us got a new president, and they just happened to know this bank president, and it was a friend of the family. And because of that, they were willing to come to the church, this president, and, and let us share on video the Waterford Christian Association, the district, and all the things we do. She was so touched by everything she saw. She wanted to work with us. God has a prepared place, amen? So she's telling the bankers we were talking to, now, this is what you need to do. Do this, do this. And they're like, oh, okay. And they're writing down the notes. And basically, the way it all turned out is she, of course, still wanted to go on the capital campaign and uh, still had this uh, plan of lowering our debt, oh, but now over a three-year period. So what we had to come up with over those three years is a million dollars extra. Well, we shared that plan with all of you. And guess what? As of our dedication time on January 1st, we had received $950,000 in pledges. Come on. And, and other people have expressed an interest. There's still people making pledges, whatever. But it, the beauty of it is, is it was almost the exact amount, and it will be in the end the exact amount what was required of us. How did that happen? Well, the Lord has a person prepared place prepared. He, he always goes in front of us. If you just trust him, listen to the voice, follow the way of faith, and be consistent with who you are. God has a plan of action, church, that's always going to work to your glory. And of course, the bank president was telling me what a great job I did, and you should be so proud of yourself. Well, I'm proud of God for all the things he's done. Amen. <laughs> And I'm always, Bonnie, I always share this. We're always proud to be pastors of a church of people who listen to the voice of God because that's the awesome thing. Together, we do great things for God. Amen? But church, I'm here to tell you today that God has a place prepared. And I love this last verse of Scripture because it says, It came to pass, as Jesus sat at a table with them, he took bread, he blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. And guess what happened? Their eyes were opened, and they knew him. He vanished from their sight, and they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked, with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? Didn't we know there was something happening here, but we didn't quite know what it was? Why? Because our eyes don't always see the reality, but if you're in touch with your spirit, you'll know something. God has a way where there is no way. God has a plan when it doesn't seem like there's a plan. God has a person in place. God has things that he is working for his glory. Church, we can put our trust in him. When they broke bread with him, they saw him for who he was. When we, by faith, are a partaker of what God has put in front of us, it will open our eyes and we will see Jesus we will see our provision. We will see our hope. We will see all that God has for us. Can we all please bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment? God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.